Crime Stoppers. We have been connected to Crime Stoppers for decades now. We were with we probably, I think, the first station to air Crime Stoppers uh, uh, reenactments. Re and I've been a big supporter of them because I, I love how simple it is, right? And you got a chance to get a tour. Yeah, and they wanted to open and hi, this Tammy, up. By the oh, way. hi. Good morning, by the way, Raj. Everybody uh, knows you, though. I don't need to do the introduction. No, you know what? They wanted to really open, uh, just give viewers and other people, potential callers especially, mm -hmm. a bit of a sneak peek behind the scenes just so they have an idea of what's going on there. Now, we were the first cameras ever allowed behind the scenes okay. at their national call center, mm -hmm. but it was under several restrictions. We could not Makes record sense. calls, couldn't listen to them, of course. of course, could not get any sensitive information at all, so we had to simulate a call. Another interesting thing is that the employees and the call takers wanted to re remain anonymous themselves. That's so important. that was one thing for security reasons, and so we got a quick sneak peek of All it. Right. Take a look. Let's have a look. Only their backs were shown as they faced calls from across Canada, parts of the United States, and overseas in a small call center that we can only say is in North Ontario. For safety reasons, employees did not want to be identified and say they understand when the people who call in ask for that same courtesy. When people call in, you know, some of the first questions they have is, you know, is this anonymous? Prove to me that it's anonymous. And it's really hard over a conversation because they don't know what's going on here mm -hmm. when those calls are coming in. So in order to see how a call works, we set up a mock tip. We had to simulate the call in order to protect the real tips that come in. Toronto Crime Stoppers, how may I help you? The caller ID is disabled right off the bat. Okay, and did this happen in Toronto? And did you, were you able to get a description of the person that had the, had the gun? Okay. And was there any vehicles associated with those two? Inside. Okay, any idea if there's any surveillance in the club? The caller is then given a special number that they can use to okay. check on the status of their tip. Okay, so what I'm gonna do right now, do you have a pen and a piece of paper and I will get you to write down your report number? During the conversation, the call taker will even stop a tipster if they're saying anything that may identify themselves. It's just a rapport that you have to build with them. They have to trust you. You have to be able to uh, talk to them and explain to them, you know, it's not that I understand because I'm not in your situation, but I, I do know that you want to make it better. So, uh, yeah, as you said, Rod, it's very simple, a yes. very simple system. It's just that a lot of people have this hesitancy to call just because they think that... Concerns about their privacy. Right, and that things can be... And especially Which can be life and death. Yeah, and that can, can be, be life and death for people, right? Right. So they wanted to give you a little bit of an idea of what it is. It is so basic, so simple, and none of your information pops up at all. And these call takers are working so hard mm -hmm. to make sure that you remain anonymous as well. So coming up later... As uh, City News at 5 will take you in there for a full tour uh, and will also tell you about the high volume of calls that that tiny call center and that small amount of uh, employees take every single month. I can only imagine. Yeah. And of course, in an emergency 911, this is when you want to report something that's happened. Right. And you want to, you think you can help out in an investigation.